Hi guys, it's Claire's and welcome to another video tutorial with me. We are continuing on with our painting loose wildflowers this month. And last week, if you tuned in, we did the Achillea or the Yarrow. And uh, that was a lot of fun to do. Um, I think a lot of people really enjoyed that. This week, we are going to be doing the cornflower. So I hope you're excited. I have a reference image that I am going to be using and um, so let's begin. Really quickly walking you through the products I'm using, I will be using my Canson watercolor paper. Um, I will be using my palette by Lisi Arts. For colors I'm using my my go-to which is St. Petersburg White Nights and we will be using green, ultramarine, blue, indigo, and violet. So these are the four colors we'll be using to kind of that look there. I have two little pots of water ready and for brushes I'm using my silver black velvet in the number eight and number four. So these are just the items I'm using. They're all listed in the description below. Feel free to check the links out there or feel free to kind of use what you have on hand and give this a go. All right, now we are officially ready to begin. I'm going to get a sheet of paper. Clearly I've run out. I need another sheet. We're going to start off by mixing some colors. And so I'm going to mix my ultramarine and some of my violet. Let's do the flowers first. And so how this is going to work is I'm going to dominantly use my number four Actually, I might not even use the number eight. Um, and I'm mixing some of the ultramarine on here. The ultramarine blue is going to be our lightest color in the floral. And then we're going to go in and add some of the violet um, to highlight the darker spots in it. So mixing some very basic color on here. And then without washing off most of the blue, I'm just going to get some of the violet and mix that on the side. So now we have a version of the blue mixed in with a little bit of the violet. <clears throat> and then finally, just get a little bit of that blue and mix it in a little bit more here. So give us a nicer consistency or mixture of the two. And then finally, I'm gonna get just some of this and put it on this side here. So we've got three different variations of this color to kind of mix in with our uh, little cornflower. It's going to be happening. And before I start, what I want to just quickly talk about is making sure that when we're using this to create these little linear uh, thin strokes, make sure that you have a lot of white space in between the strokes so that we can then go in and um, add some of the darker color but also the white needs to be there even after the darker color is added just so that we have that nice light and dark um, effect and you'll see what I mean as soon as we start. So I'm going to put this aside and I'm going to zoom in a little bit just so you can see have a better view of what I am doing. All right so hopefully this is zoomed in enough for you guys and we are going to start off by using some of the blue on our number four to paint this little cute cornflower flower. So I'm getting some of the blue and I am just going to go ahead and create these little lines kind of pressing down on my brush this way all around leaving white space in between. Some of my strokes I am pressing down some I am just kind of using just trailing the tip of my brush to kind of create these little strokes. Then I'm going to go and get some of the mixture that we've got with the purple and I'm going to add a couple of strokes just on the inner bit and kind of drizzling some of these little strokes in the areas where we've got some blue as well. Then dipping the tip of my brush in water I'm going to kind of go ahead and create some that are kind of falling outward. And literally you're trying to create this little flower with not a lot of detail, just using your little strokes and kind of 
some areas you're pressing down, some you're kind of going really light to kind of highlight a couple of little loosey, delicate strands on the sides. And the center is where you're adding the most purple. So feel free to even get, if this is too watery for you, what you've mixed up, get some of the darker purple directly from your little color palette and just add a couple of strokes on the inner part of this and making sure that you're not covering up too much of the white space, all right? So that is key and integral because we need to make sure there's a lot of white space happening in between just so we can kind of get the idea of the flower. All right, so notice how I am taking advantage of the fact that some of the blue is still damp and I'm kind of going in and just adding a couple of purple lines in there to kind of give that nice blend. So that's typically how we would do the flower. Let's do another one just so you have a good idea of how this works. So I'm gonna get some of the blue again. And we'll do, let's do one over here and kind of facing this way maybe. So again, I'm kind of creating these little blue strokes. And what you might want to do is, now that you know the kind of strokes I'm using, maybe you want to practice these strokes before you actually go ahead and paint. Uh, I find that sometimes when you loosen up with the strokes just to kind of get an idea, especially if you're mimicking someone, it takes a little bit of, oh, how should my hand be? Or how much pressure am I kind of putting on this brush? Or how am I supposed to be flicking the brush? So try it out first and then go ahead and do this on your official watercolor paper or whatever you're using really as your final for your final product and then go with that. So I've done that. I'm just getting some of the purple and I'm just adding a couple of strokes on the inside. Now we also have some of the indigo and what we'll do is let's add a little bit of the indigo as well because the indigo is also like a nice dark blue. And I'm just gonna get some color directly from it and I'm just gonna add a couple of strands not strands, I'm thinking strands, but a couple of strokes where we've added this color here. And I'm gonna add some on here as well. As you can see, while the indigo is nice to have, you don't really need it. I think between the ultramarine and the violet, it's done a fairly decent job of depicting this cornflower. Um, the indigo, if you want to highlight some darker areas, I guess it's it's helpful and handy, but otherwise I, I don't think it's really adding that much to it. So now that we've done this, we can kind of go ahead and create our little petals and stems. Not petals, sorry, leaves and stems. And we're going to be using the green. So I'm just going to mix some of this green with some of the ultramarine blue that I've had on here already and using the number four again you couldn't see that using the number four again I'm gonna go ahead and start painting the bottom off these um, of these flowers so let's just do one here and again it's going to be very light and loose and so make sure you've got white space as you're kind of doing this little bowl like painting this little bowl like uh, shape below this flower and you're pushing all the dark color down to the bottom and then once I have that I'm just getting some color directly from the cake And then once I've got that done, I'm just going to take, here's where you need to kind of really control things and just do a, oh, not bad. Just do a nice little stroke to kind of get your, get your stem down and give it some nice flair by giving it a little bit of a um, twirl, no, not a twirl. A bend yes so giving it a bit of a bend perfect I love it oh oh 
So this is where you can also use the indigo to highlight some darker areas. Just kind of add it into the, if you don't want to use the green, just use the indigo in these areas here just to highlight some darker bits. And you're good. Uh, continuing on, let's do one over here. Now this one looks like it's kind of facing upward, so let's just kind of have this go this way. So again, these are very loose cornflowers. We're not spending a lot of time with detail. We're kind of allowing the looseness to kind of speak for itself um, and the colors to kind of speak for itself more than anything. And just getting some of the darker indigo and just adding a couple of highlights to the edge there, right here where they intersect so it kind of stands out a bit more. And and that's it. All right, so now we kind of go on to doing the leaves and the leaves are fairly simple for these. And they're kind of like little long pieces of grass looking things that kind of attach to the stem. So feel free to go ahead and create a couple of those wherever you feel uh, they could be used. I'm kind of creating one here, one here, one at the bottom here as well. And then possibly one here because this stem clearly doesn't have much. And then let's just do one more here too at the very top. And I think these are good enough these small ones perfect and then <clears throat> I'm going to do one final thing and that's going to be a bud so we'll do another little stem and it's just going to be a bud so let's see we've got this in the center let's do the stem kind of coming upward over here so I'm going to do that little bud here so just like a nice round oval, not round, oval shape. Um, and then we got to do the stem. So hopefully I don't mess up the stem here, but again the stems are nice and flowy, so add a little bit of flow to it. There we go, that's my stem. I uh, got to add a little bit more color to the green. So I'm just going to add some darker hue of the green because I've mixed it with some indigo now. And I will extend this color all the way down the stem. So that it stands out a bit more. And we're going to take that all the way down. So I'm going right. to do another one of these guys that I painted right here, the little bud. And that's mainly because I was recording, but I forgot I zoomed in. And so you guys completely missed the top part of this. So we're going to start again. So I'm just going to get some of the green and I'm going to get, let's do one happening over on... <clears throat> on this end here and I'm just going to make sure that you are able to see it so we'll do one here and I'm having it pointing or facing this way and we're creating this little oval shape leaving the top fairly loose and open and then once we have that I'm dipping the tip of my brush in water and I'm just going to extend this little line and form the stem coming downward so here's my stem and it looks like it's coming out from here and that's okay. So I'm just adding some darker hues to my stem so it stands out a bit more. I'm getting some of that indigo and I'm just going to dab some of it onto the bud and then some of it onto the 
stem itself that I've just painted in. And then this way it'll kind of look like it's overlapping or on top of this area here. Perfect. Now I've noticed that some of these stems have a little bit of a pink tinge at the top. You can feel free to add that or not add it. So here's what I would do. I would get a little bit of Carmen and I'm going to mix a little bit of that Carmen on here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of water at the top. And let's use the number eight since we have it, right? And I'm gonna add a little bit of water at the top to dampen the area. And I'll make sure that the, the water is kind of like slightly touching the green, but forming that little dome shape. And then going in with this, I'm just gonna add a little bit. Okay, clearly there's not enough water. Can't see. Adding some water, just making sure I can see the water. But you don't want to add too much water where it's pooling because if it's pooling, then you won't have that nice blend of pink. See, this is what's happened because it was pooling and it's not damp. So I'm just going to kind of rub off some of this. Let's try it at the bottom here. That was a fail. So I'm just going to try a little bit of dampness right here, just at the very top, taking off any excess water for pooling. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of pink at the top there. And that's not bad. I wasn't quite the blending effect that I was going for, but it kind of works just as well in my opinion. So it's perfect. We just need a little bit of like a pink tinge at the top to kind of indicate these are budding. That's what these kind of look like in the image that I have for reference. So it's fine if it's kind of blending in with some of the green. I kind of like that. And I can see some of that happening here. I was just wiping off a little bit of the pink just to take it away. But I love how it looks together with the blues and the um, the purple so fairly simple to do easy to do so I hope you guys like this video let me know in the comments below what you thought uh, please feel free to share this video share your work with me on social media like on Instagram my handle is hello Clarice G or on Facebook um, I love seeing your work and I love um, getting tagged in it so thanks so much guys for watching and if you like videos like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Next week, there will be a new video on another wildflower. So stay tuned for that, guys. And before next week, uh, next week's video comes out, we will be having Sunday Live. So tune in for Sunday Live, 2 p.m. EST on YouTube. And let's paint something pretty. Thanks, guys. Bye.